Thanks for inviting me. Um, I'm working on the same project as Egil, which is in medieval Oslo, the red area, and a large ex excavation that has been go ongoing since 2013. Our site, or the site I'm going to talk about in this little bit, was finished in 2015, and it's a railway project which cuts right through the middle of the medieval town of Oslo. Uh, and I'm going to say that Egil has now painted a picture of this being a uh, stone town, and he's kind of right, but it's mostly wooden <laughs> houses. Uh, and everything I'm going to show you is wooden houses. Uh, the site is called F03, and it's mostly residential buildings. Uh, and it's part of the ordinary people's part of town. Uh, the standard property unit that I'm going to be talking about, the Bygård, uh, in uh, Os Oslo and in Norway at the time, uh, literally means a farm in the town, as we will see a bit later, but it's basically an urban plot. Uh, going from the street out into the unknown for now. Um, and the plots that we have found plot boundaries in the carved into the natural, you might say, with uh, ditches and rows of post holes, a small stream possibly, and more posts indicating that these are the plot boundaries going east-west in the town. The site cuts across several of them and none, and they are mostly withdrawn from the street, so this is not the part that people are showing off to the rest of the world. Uh, the entire site was probably, before it was built, a wetland. Uh, being slowly infilled by the people throwing rubbish into it. And it continues to be very wet, also when people have started living there. Uh, I'm going to focus on the north part, which, where we have a house, which we call 200, just to show you the life of one of the houses and the plot around it. Uh, it's beginning, it's a about four and a half by five meter house with just one room. Uh, we got a wooden floor in the eastern part, but not so much in the western part. Um, with uh, lots of finds like needles and spin whorls and whetstones and griddles, suggesting that people have been living and working in this house. Uh, it's one of the latest houses on the site um, despite the fact that most of the material from the house is dated till around the beginning of the 13th century, uh, we think that it was occupied around the middle of the 13th century. Uh, we have the entire section of buildings on site, all date to the beginning of the 12th century, and we got one and a half meter houses. There is no way they were at the same time. So we think that this is reused material from earlier buildings. Um, all the way through, mostly. And around this time, the town of Oslo had been going on for about 200 years. So they would probably have deforested the area around it, which might be why they scavenge what they can, whenever they can. Uh, the house was then the people moved out and the cows moved in. Judging by the quite large layer of manure and hay and straw on the wooden floor. And then later someone has decided that it's quite a nice house, we'd like to live in it again. So they covered it up with clay and sand 
and put in another wooden floor. Again, quite evident in the eastern part, not so much in the western part. And there's also evidence of a possible oven being put into the southeastern part of the house. Uh, and again, here we find spinning whorls, needles, loom weights, especially in this part. And then all the wet stones are in this part of the house. And the, the macrofossil analysis also show that <coughs> Uh, there has been uh, household activities, making food, uh, and associated probably with this oven, the corner oven over here. Um, and then, at the end, it all burnt down. Of course, it's made of wood. Oslo burned 14, 15, 16 times, probably more, during the entire <coughs> its uh, life from the beginning of the 11th till 1624 when it was moved. Um, so it's quite common to find quite burnt out <coughs> houses. This house also has what might be a, in the late phase, a gate, a uh, covered porch in the north, um, which is attached to the house by this very long wooden uh, log suggesting that it's built as part of the house in the, its latest life phase. If you look at the plot that this house is part of, uh, in the beginning, while it's still quite fresh and wet, they uh, build an oven right here in the corner of the plot. The house is situated up here, really. Um, this oven is uh, has been used to process metals, uh, non-ferrous metals, uh, copper, tin, and even barium has been found traces of in the microfossil analysis. We got a ho house just north of it with uh, indeterminate use so far. And someone has seen fit to put planks in to step on. I can guarantee that they would have been very nice. The place was very wet even when we were digging it and we would really have liked those planks. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's second phase of the occupation of this, of this plot. Uh, there's the continued use of this oven, uh, sometimes for uh, working metals, sometimes as refuse dump, uh, as evident by the, both the micro, micromorphological and macrofossil analysis. Uh, there's a new house built right on top of the old one with looted material because they don't fit together very well. Uh, there's flooring all across, which has uh, straw and hay on it possibly evidence of threshing, and a small corner fireplace uh, that where there has definitely been burnt very fragrant leaves, woods, berries, that suggest that it might have been used for smoking and curing meat at some point. And then later someone has moved the cows in again. Uh, there's uh, large layers of, several layers of manure on top of each other suggesting uh, cows or horses have been living there for a while. And the wooden planks have now become a wooden walkway going all the way across the site and also into the building with a small ramp and northwards. The reason we end here is of course the large stone building Engel was talking about, which goes, has cut all through the mid Middle Ages medieval layers into the natural, so there's nothing to be found there. Um, the third phase of occupation, I call it the backyard activities, is where you do all the stuff that you don't want people to see. The walkway is still there, uh, but this area has been completely covered by debris, mostly layers of twigs and garbage. 
and some people are put in the planks again, several layers of planking to step on. We have a new oven in the same area as the old one, also probably used for metal working, uh, right next to a latrine or a cesspit. And up here we have a large pit which has been filled with water uh, and, thrown, and people have been throwing ashes into it. And those ashes are also mostly from high temperature ovens above uh, 10, about 1000 to 1200 degrees Celsius. So people have been working in high temperatures and not just baking bread or cooking their eggs. Uh, this face is replaced with the first face of the house that we were looking at. It's got a third oven right on top of, this, of the other ones. Um, and a possible house up here in the north on the plot next to it. Um, Yeah, that's the oven. Uh, the second phase of the house, where when the, when the animals are moved in, is has a lot of planks, planks laid out around it. There's a lot of posts and quite a lot of messing up of the layers, suggesting that animals have been moving around in this area. Uh, which is the same as the, which kind of corroborates the house being used for animals inside. Yeah, and that's what it looked like in the, in the field. And uh, we have several layers of planking, which means that the debris has been building up quite quickly and people have not wanted to get their feet wet. <laughs> uh, considering the consistency or the, the components, I quite agree with them. <laughs> uh, in the third phase, it looks like it has become more of a residential area. There's a covered porch up here. There's several layers of plank wooden floors in the south and possibly another house up here, which has burnt down quite likely in the same period that in the same fire that took this house. Um, all the way through though, there's definite, well mostly uh, people have been, uh, evidence that people have been working metals in this area. And so we are, I'm going back to the beginning just to show you that this is a part of what we think is the metal working district of Oslo that we might have found. We got the ovens up here, first oven. We got a house down here, which has been burnt down, with lots of metal objects, a slag inside, quite a large covering of heavily burnt clay, which might have been the hearth. Um, and on the plot next to it, there's a house that has been used either as uh, the actual hearth or a place for throwing out the garbage and the debris from the hearth. It has several layers of ashes uh, which seem to have been at least the bottom part deposited in water. Um, this is the heavily burnt house and all the houses in the southern part from around the stream and down were burnt in the same fire Uh, the second period, we have another oven up here. Yep. Uh, a house down here which has had a hearth in it with probably a oven covering, high temperature material with lots of slags and melted minerals. And the continued dumping of, of hearth debris in this house, but also some that seem fit to put in a small work area. For, uh, with a clay box and a small hearth with a funnel for bellows 
quite like probably for just a short period of time after the fire took the house uh, around it and then it's been covered up by more debris uh, we think that all of this happened before the middle of the 13th century sorry I'm kind of working on another time scale <laughs> um, and that the, the, all the fires in this place and all the, um, the, the high risk activity, you could call it, might have been part of the King Magnus, which is called the Lawmender. He came up with a law for the towns of 1276, where he relegated all the metalworking activities to the outskirts, or actually the outside of town, along with other fire risk activities like baking. And yeah. So we think this might be a good reason why he did it. Thank you.